Hi, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to another edition of The Big Joel Show. I'm excited today. I've got Brian, I'm not going to butcher this, Berg Jans. Perfect. Uh, from Caliber Home Loans. Home Loans. We were just having a discussion about the name <laughs> change there. Not Caliber Funding, Caliber Home Loans. I've been around the mortgage business a while, so I've called it other <laughs> things. Um, and Brian is the National Director for military and VA lending. And I think everyone is going to have a lot of great takeaways from this conversation today, whether you sell real estate or whether you originate and close mortgage loans. I think Brian has a lot of interesting things to talk about regarding serving our veterans, serving our active duty uh, military people. And as we were just talking about, uh, I was telling Brian, I've started off literally driving people to the VA in DC. I don't want to tell you how many years ago. <laughs> I'll age myself to 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 get tough loans um, approved, but the US Public Health Service, they all qualify yep. for VA oh, loans yeah. as well. Um, so Brian and I are going to have a discussion today. I'm going to ask him uh, lots of questions. Of course, as always, uh, this will probably be a podcast where you're probably going to have questions and you can go on Facebook afterwards and ask whatever. And Brian will be able to go on there and, and answer them for you. But um, uh, Brian, tell me uh, a little bit about yourself to start before we just get into the nitty gritty. I've got your bio here, but it's probably better for you to just tell me. I know you you served. I know you are, uh, uh, um, uh, what's the word? I'm, um, I'm I know you're in the reserves right yep. now. I'm sorry. I know you're in the reserves right now yep. uh, and you're active, but you've also been a loan officer. I know you're not yep. actively originating yep. right now, um, but you're in it. Tell us a little bit sure. about you and then let's talk. So uh, all I've known is mortgage and military my whole life. Two right? M's. Yeah, M &M. two M's. Okay. And the fact that I still got hair on my head is pretty impressive. Very. Um, yeah. If it's real. <laughs> if it's real. It's yeah. real. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, starting to thin a little bit, yeah. but I blame that on my kids. Yeah. Um, How so many I, kids do you have? I got two. How old? 12 and seven. All right. That'll do it. Um, 12 and seven. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I joined the Navy in 95 right out of high school and uh, got into the mortgage business in 2002, um, right after kind of doing all the stuff I was doing with the military. And, uh, you know, I started off as a loan officer. I loved it. Um, it's addicting, to be frankly honest, because problem solving, problem solving, problem solving, dealing with customers. I love the, you know, the customer interaction portion. Um, started getting involved a little bit with uh, the VA side of things later on in my career, probably in 2004, 2005. Right, right, right. Um, after a couple of years. After of, doing a couple of 80-20 live yeah. docs and yeah. a couple of those yeah. loans before pre-crash. Yeah, I started yeah. off in subprime, so you okay. can only imagine. So um, you know, I know what you were doing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I didn't really realize um, about the issues that military and veterans were facing until I would go to, you know, drill weekend and, uh, you know, and, and all the reservists out there that are listening right now that are in the mortgage industry or real estate industry can probably relate to this. But in the reserve world, once people know what you do for a living, you're, you're like the guy. So everybody comes to you and ask questions. And, uh, so one weekend I was at drill and I had a bunch of people come up to me with the same issue and they were trying to do, a a refinance on their VA loan. What, is, what, what does drill mean so people uh, understand yeah, what Yeah, so that is. it's the term that we use to, and I don't know why they use the word drill because we're not drilling anything. Um, but the the time when everybody shows up that once a month to the reserve center. Got it. And okay. you do everything you got to do to be ready in case the, you know, you get called to go okay. do some other stuff. So you're doing your once a month yep. drill Yep. With the same people. Same, same people, people all the time. Okay. You know, yeah. 700 of us, you know. Uh, and everybody's got a day job. Everybody's got a day job. Got it. And everybody storms the, you know, drill center for the whole weekend. And it's, uh, you know, paperwork and the paperwork shuffle and medical. And everybody talks about, you know, the last month and all the stuff and challenges they faced in their life, et cetera. And you got 18-year-olds and you got people on the tail end of their career. So it's a unique environment. But uh, one of the questions that kept coming up to me was people were having challenges with their refinance. And, uh, you know, I was a little green behind the ears, only been doing it for a couple of years. And but what caught me was when they were trying to do their VA interest rate reduction refinance. Loans. I -R -R -Ls. Yeah, Earls. Right? Yeah, Earls. Uh, yeah. A lot of lenders were asking for appraisals and stuff. And I just knew that that was kind of a red flag. And so that got me kind of thinking in the direction like, what, what is happening out here? So after I did some research and started really studying up on the V 
VA home loan benefit itself, I was like, hey, you know what? If it's happening here, it's happening everywhere. So I kind of, that's kind of when I became a student of VA. Um, I really didn't start care, carrying this big torch that I like to think I carry now as far as being an advocate and trying to go out in the marketplaces and speaking on it uh, until about 2000, I think about 11 or 12 when I really got interested into the whole education piece and how, you know, wanting to fill the gap of education, I felt that, you know, there was very limited education for loan officers and realtors about VA home loans in general. And do you uh, think, do you think that even today it's a massive opportunity for agents and loan officers to just create so many more loans and sell so many more houses? Oh yeah. So I think to, you know, going to today for sure that uh, bus- you can do business development through education. I think, you know, going out into the market and do community engagement by educating the realtors and the loan officers, we're all in the same boat. Like, I love it when, you know, you listen to, you know, LOs talk about how realtors don't get it. And then you hear realtors talk about how LOs don't get it. But, you know, when I get them all in the same room together, they, they face the same challenges. And typically it's they don't know what they don't know. You know, and VA is one of those products I do feel that you shouldn't be the jack of all trades and VA be one of them. Should be, you should be a master of one if you can. Because it literally is probably one of those products and those programs that a realtor would say, you know what, I'm willing to go and give this to a subject matter expert versus my referral partner because I want to make sure this gets done. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, loan officers who are what I like to call practitioners in the space, right? Because they're in it every day because it's very fluid you know va likes to throw out changes all the time versus you know with circulars and you know you have to really be a student of what's happening and what's changing and you also got to be willing to have conversations with underwriters to defend your files because a lot of times underwriters too are green behind the ears with va they might do one va loan a year and not understand you know the handbook's not designed to be black and white is designed to, you know, give them latitude to be able to make underwriting decisions. And sometimes this is where a practitioner can come into play and help guide them in the direction they need to go. And I think if you can take that and apply it to training materials where you can go out and educate the marketplace, you will become the perceived subject matter expert, which will obviously lend credit to your business and and provide referrals beyond you know, which- and I'll, I'll 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 share this with uh, with with everyone. Um, you know, if you understand uh, how to originate um, and close a VA loan, closing a conventional loan is a joke. is extremely easy. Mm-hmm. If you understand the concepts um, behind, you know, approving a, a VA, whether it's active duty or or, or, or retired or a vet. Um, Every, all the rest of mortgage banking is pretty easy. And I was lucky because I learned starting with VA and FHA. And do you know how many jumbo loans I've gotten approved in my career by doing residual income? Because original yep. ratios for jumbos were 33, 38. Oh, wow. And so now they still pay the same thing for a loaf of bread. Everyone pays the same thing. Sure. So I would... Be, I would take a VA, I would take a jumbo conventional loan and do residual income on it. Even though the back ratio was 48, you know, they had $7,000 yeah. yeah. left over. Yeah. It made total sense. And Perfect. it's what you're saying. I knew how to package that and get an underwriter to approve that. Yep. Um, but I did that because I understood how to do, you know, I understood how to serve, you know, a veteran and Around here, I was telling Brian <laughs> before, uh, literally, uh, you know, if your underwriter would deny it, you know, back then you could take it to the sure. local. We used to <laughs> drive them down to the local office. The woman's name, I still remember her name, Juanita Gilliam. She's probably retired. And you could go and you could make an appointment and sit there yep. with the veteran and, and take a denied loan and literally go in there and plead the, ca- and plead the case and get it approved. Yep. And, you know, what you're saying is so true. You know, a lot of people knew that I knew how to do that. And I mean, I wasn't doing only VA loans. I was doing lots of different sure. loans, but they knew that I knew how to do it. What, what, what would you tell? Let's start, let's start with, start with real estate agents sure. for a second. You're a real estate agent and you're listening to this podcast right now. And you're in an area where there either is active duty military, mm-hmm. or maybe it's just an area where you have a lot of retired military, you know, where just people yep. are 
all together. Sure. Um, what's what are some uh, some some things that you would do if you wanted to put yourself front and center in that community, and you weren't uh, you weren't a veteran yourself? Sure. Um, so you're kind of a you know an outsider. You're not yep. in the club because yep. um, I think you'd admit yep. being in the club's a lot easier. Um, but you're not in the club. Uh, what would you do um, to to get started? How would you? move your way into that community if you're sure. a real estate agent to start sure. with i like to call these people patriots okay so we there call we go them the patriots okay um you know that's a great question and i think uh, and we hear this a lot when we travel the country uh talking to realtors you know how do i get and you know how do I, how does this happen for me right. a couple things number one um i always say to you know community engagement right community outreach and engagement like if you know, what does your volunteering activities look like within the military and veteran demographic? Because, you know, one thing I will tell you is that veterans and military folks, at least by my experience, and I don't care what USAA says, they're not really brand loyal, they're people loyal, right? So if that's- I, just, I, I want you to repeat that. Everyone listen <laughs> to this, T- time stop, not brand loyal, people loyal, which means they do not care how much paper you mail to their house with just sold cards. They don't care right? because they're people loyal. That's I love the way you put that. That's a very strong message sure. for agents. Sorry to interrupt no, you. No, I just no, wanted I like to it. No, that's, repeat that. But it's true, right? So, which is great because, you know, you got to show that you're sincere, right? So there's no like magic pill for this. Like, you know, I know in our world, because we're sales you know, we like that immediate gratification, like quick hit deals. But this is kind of the demographic where it's a marathon, not a sprint. And you have to show that you're your sincere commitment to this community. And so I always encourage people to do volunteer work. Uh, you know, you that's easily identifiable in every market. You can go to Eventbrite, type in military. You can volunteer at the USO. You have American Legions, VFWs. You got all kinds of stuff you can get involved with. And start rubbing elbows with, especially realtors, because everybody's a customer. Renters, anybody, anybody could possibly be looking to buy a house. That's a long tail. They could buy in eight years. Yeah, exactly. Right. right? Yeah. So for realtors, I mean, the community piece is huge. You know, it's really huge. And then I also say this too. You know, uh, when I'm talking and teaching the realtors, I always, you know, ask show of hands, how many people here today could show me if I want to, could tell me 100 percent. That if I went onto your social media right now, you're telling me you're open business for military. And it's typically none, right? None of them, because at the end of the day, how do they know that, you know, you're open for business for military? So I will tell you something interesting. So I work with a lot of military spouses, okay? And as a matter of fact, one, um, and I'm going to give her some props right now, Brittany Bacher, who is the outgoing 2017, or, you know, well, obviously one year past, but the National Military Spouse of the Year for the whole military, right? She's She works with me. And, you know, it's funny listening to the spouses because they're like, hey, listen, we will do our research online before we come to your marketplace. Okay. We reach out to local spouses in the community to find out who we should be working with. And then we do our research on those individuals. Well, if little Timmy is in that marketplace and doesn't have anything on their website that suggests why they like to serve the military, why they're passionate about helping veterans like my grandfather served or I'm a veteran or my mom, you know, whatever, how is that person going to gravitate to them to pick them? Right. So there has to be you have to like actually show it and promote it yourself that that's the type of business that you'd like to have. So so, uh, you know, again, social media, right. Hot button. Every agent has Facebook. (laughs) You know, every everybody has everything. Uh, It's a strong message right there. I challenge you right now for Brian. We both challenge you to go to your social media right now, your Facebook LinkedIn, your Instagram, your Twitter, and does it show, I love the way you put it, I think you said open for business, what did you say, it's great, are you open for business for military families, whether they're active or retired, Sure. and uh, I bet it'd be scary how many people aren't open for business, right, and that is something that if you're active duty um, and you're, or, or you're retired, um, you would want to see that 
if you were referred, if you were looking, I always tell agents all the time, I'm like, listen, LinkedIn, that's your resume. Everyone's going to go look sure. and see how you look there. Facebook, they're going to look, that's the fun thing. Oh, what does he like to do? How many kids does he have? Does he like <laughs> to ride horses? You know, like what, what did he eat for dinner? Yeah. You know, you know, that type of stuff. And how do you look when someone clicks on there? So the, the military person gets a referral from their friend to call, you know, this guy, Brian, and they go on there and they don't, there's not one buzzword. There's nothing on there. And yeah, they, they still might make the call, but it's not as warm and fuzzy when the agent could have actually, if they're volunteering or, or it could be as simple as just saying, welcome all military. It could be something as simple as that. Correct. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. And at any time you can show pictures of you out in the community doing some cool stuff. I mean, you know, you got literally 10 seconds or 15 seconds to show probably, something. Probably less. Maybe actually. Even less than that, yeah. right? They're looking for something yeah. to gravitate to you towards. And if it's not there, they're moving on to number four. What would you four, say? Five. Give them a nugget. Give them a takeaway right now. Um, they're not actively volunteering. Literally, what would you put on your Facebook? Would you put um, welcome all military? Like literally, what would you tell someone to write if they asked you? Yeah, I would say start off with, you know, basically, uh, you know, open for, you know, I don't want to say open for business, but extremely passionate about serving and working with the military home buyer. Um, very patriotic. Uh, appreciate everything you do and the sacrifices that you and your family has made. So two sentences. Boom. Two deal. sentences. Yep. Appreciate your service and appreciate the sacrifices that you and your family make. Uh, how, how easy is that? You guys can turn the podcast off right now and everyone's going to sell three more houses. <laughs> no, don't turn us off yet. Um, but no, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, no. but that's the kind of, you know, I get a lot of feedback from my podcast that there's like no fluff, you know, like sure. we're going deep yep. and that's something that people can implement. You know, yep. immediately. Okay, so agents, so people are people loyal. Sure. Sorry, veterans yep. and active duty sure. are people loyal, not brand loyal. That's Correct. huge. Um, are you volunteering? Are you yep. out there? And do people even know you're open for business? Yep. Um, anything else that's yeah. just major? Yeah, I'm I got listening. one more. So I got one more little nugget. So uh -huh. uh, when we when we travel, one of the things I like to do when I'm talking to agents about VA home loan benefits mm -hmm. and trying to educate them on all the myths and stuff, I always ask them, you know, like what, you know, what do they do to di differentiate themselves in their marketplace? You know, because agents always like to share, which is good, because at the end of the day, um, I look at the VA space as not, we're not we're not all we're not competitors. Right. No one really has 100 percent market share. And if I can help somebody do more VA business, that's helping vets get in the houses. And all good. That's typically right. agents that work in that space feel the same way. Right. And so we had an agent who's like, hey, um, you know, never served. No, no one in her family's ever served. And she's just extremely passionate about helping the military. And so she said she decided to come up with something she called Mommy and Me which is a, I think it was once a month meeting outside of base where she invited all the newcoming military families to come in and network with other newcoming families, right? She committed to 12 months of this, like picked the same venue, same spot, and put it and advertised it. So very similar to those of you that do uh, home buyer seminars yep. and you commit to it, you know, once a month, same concept, right? But you got to commit. Can't be one and done. Yep. Got to do it. Got to right? commit. So, because yep. the reality is, it's a it's a residual thing, right? So it's just like you know, in exactly to what she said. Boom! First month, there was like two people. Two there. people, right? Um, and she then, had to eat all the cookies yeah, herself, probably. Right. Second month, yeah. there was more. Third month, a lot more. And by month six, she had to find a new venue, right? Because the military spouses and the families that were showing up kept talking about how this was great for them when they show when they got to right. a new market right and that's how she built her business in that demographic so she became she became the place where they all met each other yep. as people are transferred yep. in and out that's yep. that's really cool all right let's switch over to sure. loan officers for a second um uh, which I know you're an expert on both sides. So you're a loan officer. You're listening to this. Um, you know, I'll just put a couple words in your mouth regarding subject matter expert. You know, number one, you know, you got to know the guidelines. You got to sure. know that stuff. I'll yep. let you talk more about that. But share with the loan officer listening to this that's maybe never done a VA loan. Uh, maybe they've done one and they botched it and they didn't know how to look at a COE or certificate of eligibility. Yep. They didn't know how to read an LAS. 
They didn't know what, I mean, they just yeah. literally, by the way, an LES is just to paste up people, but, you know, <laughs> didn't know what, uh, you know, VHA is yeah. and BAQ and, uh, you know, all that stuff. We don't have to define all sure. that right now, but you, you all can tell, I haven't originated a loan in a while, but... You know, if you know it, you know know it, it, you You know, know, if you know it, you know it. And um, it's not that, you know, hard to be a subject matter expert, but you do have to concentrate on it. Um, And obviously, if you've never been in the military like me or don't, I don't really have a, but I have some family members, but not really um, that have actively served. So the the psychology piece, I'm obviously going to be behind on a little bit. Um, I do understand the deployed piece and dealing with one spouse and having someone on FaceTime in Afghanistan while the wife is looking at houses yep. that I understand or, or being on the, or being on a call at 3 AM because it's 3 PM where the other person is, you yep. know, and you're with the spouse that I've done hundreds of times, you know, on the weekend yep. or whatever. Um, that's when someone's buying a loan, you know, when their spouse is deployed or whatever, but tell, talk to, give me some good, some great stuff for loan officers. They're listening. They're near a base. <clears throat> There's a lot of military, you know, they're patriotic. Maybe they were in the military themselves. Sure. but really haven't thought about it. I mean, we just, we got great things for agents sure. here. Thank you, by the way. These are awesome. People are going to love this. Let's go to the loan officer piece. Sure. Let's, let's, let's drill down on that. So first, uh, first is to table set this people, and this is for both sides of the fence here, realtors and and loan officers, uh, they need to get the whole "I need to get on base" theory out of their head. Like, take that out of the out of the game. Like, don't worry about "I need to get on base." I need to put flyers on the base. I need to somehow get on this base because that's going to drive me business. Take that. I couldn't be further from the truth. So the so the so the agent mentality. It's more agents than loan officers sure. of the sort of the farming, the door to door, which would equivalent to being on the base you're 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 literally saying not needed not at needed. all not needed at all so you, you can, can forget that forget that you okay know, forget that because a lot of people i think especially in my loan officer world because uh you know we get a lot of feedback from LOs saying hey how do i do this this and this i'm trying to get on base and it's like you're not gonna because it's like the two bank rule <laughs> on every base and it's typically wells or a credit union or somebody navy federal navy somebody, federal yeah stuff like that and to be frankly honest as a mortgage professional if you're talking to people who already live on base they're not going to do a loan with you they're already on base housing right <laughs> by the way that's really funny that you just said that <laughs> but, a bunch of people are like oh what why am i trying to get on base they're all on base housing right they have no vha yeah it's paid for by the yeah. way that's variable housing allowance people yeah. that's when you're off base yeah so they're already <laughs> taken already, care of. correct yeah. zero vha yeah. they get right? nothing yeah exactly you know so they're already taken care of um so what i would tell myself as if i walked in the door back in 2002 is to study up on the va handbook for one yeah learn the guidelines just, just learn the guidelines right and understand this too they're gray Okay. All right. They're gray on purpose. Understand the guidelines. But one thing I would also word word of caution to people is too is just because you know the handbook back and forth, back frontwards and backwards doesn't mean you're an expert because you become an expert by swings at the plate, right? And you know you mentioned earlier about messing up, you know people messing up deals and stuff like that. But that's a growing opportunity because I can tell you in my 16 year career. The reason why I know 90% of what I do is because I was willing to take cha- chances on helping people in scenarios that were going to be tough, that the likelihood of success was going to be, you know, very slim, but I was willing to give it a shot for the vet. And I did not come in on the winning end, but I learned a lot about the process and what you can and can't do. I always say that uh, I tell loan officers all the time, I'm like, okay, once you've closed a hundred loans, you kind of sort of know what you're doing. After you close a thousand, then we'll talk. And they're oh. like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, there's that many ways to screw a loan up. With, uh, so so, so you literally need about a thousand underneath your belt to feel comfortable. And if you're feeling comfortable around the 400 mark, you're going to get caught somewhere. <laughs> yep. I know. And you're, 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 you're you just have to right. do it. You're, yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. And you got to yeah. be willing to take chances. You know what I mean? Like just, you know, some people feel like, hey, if I, if it's not a hundred percent certainty, you know, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to risk. Tell me, anything. tell me about, tell me about lingo. I've, I, you know, you said it's people, not brand. You know, one of the first things that I understood right away with military, and to be honest, with law enforcement and 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 fire department as well, is is it's a very much of a clan mentality. And sure. if you're good, if you're trusted by a what I call a brother, yep. you're good. Like there's not, you know, a lot of questions. And I noticed that as soon as I started learning. All I had to do, literally, was on the first phone call, 
be going through things that I know none of the loan officers were talking about. Yep. Like literally, whether it had something to do with certificate of eligibility, have you owned a home before? Did you do a VA loan on it? Did you refinance that? Yep. Or did you leave that VA loan in Topeka? Yep. You know, and now you're coming here. You know, what are you, what's your BAQ? Is your B, oh, by the way, is your BAQ going to change because you're moving from here to here? You know, whoa. You know, it's yep. just automatic comfort zone with the, with the potential yep. client. Like, ooh, okay, this person actually understands you know, what's going on? You know, do you have hazardous duty pay? You yep. just came back from here. How long is that going to go on? You know, knowing can you use that for income or not? Yep. Um, you know, is is that as you're learning, I, I just found, I don't know whether you would confirm that, sure. but that's just so, I thought that was so important. Well, those will, that'll actually kill a deal or save a deal, right? right? So we're talking about the stuff like if, if I could give loan officers advice, especially ones in military in military communities, understand an LES be a student of the LES because there's things on an LES. That that's a you're, that's a pay stub. That's an you know, active duty pay stub. People <laughs> leave, leave an leave an earning statement. Leave an earning it's, statement. Uh, that's right. I don't know how they managed to put like seventy five or one hundred and twenty five blocks on that thing, but you know, leave it to Uncle Sam. Yeah, they exactly. Fill a whole page. They don't yeah. like white space. Yeah. Uh, but there's a couple things on there that could kill your deal, and if you're not a student of it, you wouldn't know that. You know the. Ep- you know, estimated, uh, you know, termination or termination of service that's up there, ETS date. You know, if it says something less than a year, you got some explaining to do. And, you know, like you said before, you know, basic allowance for housing, what zip codes listed on the uh, leave and earning statement that they're getting credit for now? Because if they're coming from San Diego and moving to Jacksonville, and it's you're not, dropping in a big way, <laughs> dropping in a big way, but unfortunately, you know the accounting service in in Uncle Sam's world doesn't. They don't work know that it till they get there. <laughs> till they get there. So now you're qualifying somebody basically on a lot more than they really have. And then when the underwriters get wind of this thing during the process and find out, you have a problem. So 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 we're getting like super. We're we're almost geeking out right now <laughs> um, on 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 VA a little bit. And as you people can tell, I've done a couple of yeah. VA loans in my life. I'm sure you can, you oh, can yeah. tell right away. Um, you know, but but this geeking out, we're going to stop it right now. Yep. It actually, we're I'm actually proving a point that you should be able to geek out. You you you, yep. you should be able to. Um, and you know, I learned uh, a lot of it, by the way, by actually finding out which underwriter. I started at Crestar Bank, which is SunTrust now. Oh wow! Um, and uh, finding out which underwriter was really an expert in that, and um, spending some time with her on the phone, and having her really school me, so I knew like back then you're faxing, you're sure. emailing nothing, faxing an LES and looking at it with her together yep. and having her go, okay, here, 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 and here. The second you look at it, you go to these five places immediately, boom, 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 boom. Yep. And you cross check all these, then you can go back and look at the rest. But these are your hot, you know, I can remember yeah. learning that. Um, and I'm sure there's underwriters at every mortgage company right now that really know what they're doing that these LOs have access to, right? Oh yeah. And they're willing to, they're willing to make decisions. And I think that's important too. So that's going back to what you were saying before about LOs and how to make an impact and try to build their brand in this demographic. Yeah, yeah, keep going. It's, uh, you know, number one, understanding the guidelines. Number two, be willing to educate your real estate partners on this stuff because there's a lot of myths out there with VA. And the best thing that any loan officer or branch manager can do is get out into the marketplace and start educating everybody willing to listen about what's real and what's not real about VA home loans. What percentage do you think, I'm thinking of this as you're talking, you might know this, I don't know if you know this or not, you probably, what percentage do you think in any in any town or city or province or whatever, what percentage of law enforcement and even fire do you think are ex-military or veterans? Is it pretty high? Is I it would like say it's probably- 30 to 40%? Yeah, I would say so too, because a lot of people come out of the military and go into yeah. law enforcement. So, so, you know, it's interesting. So what I'm hearing you say, you know, the loan officers, yep. the old home buyer seminars, this sexy thing, sure. they do lunch and learns for agents yes. all the time. I never hear loan officers doing a lunch and learn about VA, about VA mm-hmm. and teaching the agents how to sell, how to yep. serve those buyers. And, you know, an agent can be thinking, well, there's no base around here anywhere. And then I'm sitting here while you're talking, yeah. thinking 30 percent of the police department could be veterans, even if they were only in for four years sure. and got out. And every one of them is eligible yep. and, and probably maybe none of them have even used it. 
Uh, Who even knows? Probably guaranteed that. I'll give you an example. Look at St. Louis, right? I'm from St. Louis. Okay. We don't have active duty presence in St. Louis. We don't have active duty presence for a big, I mean, a big portion of Missouri. It's in Southern Illinois, one part of some rural town in uh, Fort Leonard Wood, and then up north at Weidman Air Force Base. But if you look at the stats of Missouri at five point something million and almost 600,000 vets, there's your percentage of vets. Every state's like that for the most part. Do you, did, 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 he said that pretty fast. You might want to roll the tape back on that. Basically, what Brian is saying is, is if you're listening to this, you're going, oh, there's no base near me. You know, there's no military yep. people. Uh, he just poo pooed that one, basically smash mouth that, yep. and basically said wrong <clears throat> from St. Louis. Uh, by the way, no bases anywhere nope. near and how many veterans yeah so we got 500 something thousand so we got 5.9 million people in missouri so it's what 10 percent. so basically 10 percent of the people yep. and there's no base anywhere nearby yep and we're 95 5 so 95 percent male five percent female veteran ratio so that means almost like one out of every 10 i think i came down with the stats it was like one out of every 10 guys in the state of Missouri, statistically speaking, has served in the military. Which means they got a certificate of eligibility and they could use VA for a loan. Sure. You Which just... is, again, we could end this right now. That's massive. So I get asked all the time, Brian, people are going to people are going to dig this, by the way. I get asked all the time, Joel, I got to do a lunch and learn for these agents. What should I talk about? You know, one, you know? Of, the, one of the things you could talk about right out the gate is understand Tidewater. You know, when I go into, uh, I'll never forget, I'll never forget this. I go into uh, a continuing education class for realtors and we had, a, I had a ton of them in there. I was probably 85 to 100. And, uh, and this time I decided just to, to say, hey, before everybody leaves today, I'm going to prove to you that the VA appraisal is the best appraisal in the game. And it sounded like going to Wrigley Field at a Cubs game and being a Cardinal fan. <laughs> it was like I was getting booze and. You let know. me let me I want to I want to back I want to back that up because um I don't want to run out of time before we talk about this because sure. this is important. Sure. Um you know Brian goes all over the country uh for caliber and does stuff like this or he's in front of big rooms or he's with the local loan officers and then he's in front of a bunch of real estate agents uh you know teaching and educating yeah. and and helping people and you know there's a stigma with VA, especially if you've been around for a while uh, with the whole appraisal piece, especially sure. with fee panel, yep. which is a little different now. Now you see how old I am when I even say fee panel. A lot of people don't even know what that means. Um, by the way, what that means is you used to get assigned an appraiser and the guy or woman could have been from like 150 miles away and not even know how to look right. at the comps and come in like 50,000 low on something where you're like, what, what, what? <laughs> and it, correct? Yeah. And everybody freaks out. So there's a thing with agents, with VA contracts, with taking a VA contract, uh, it's it's almost up there with a two three K contract with yep. a with a Reno. Um, there's a thing with it, and there really shouldn't be a thing with it in 2019. No. So loan officers, you know, as you're constantly trying to provide value for your agent partners, or maybe you're doing a lunch and learn, or maybe you're putting people in a room and educating. You know, this is right where you were going with the appraisal thing. Yep. I just wanted to, I wanted to preempt because sure. you didn't say the beginning of that. I wanted to <laughs> I wanted people to know where you're yeah. going. So there's a lot of people listening that wouldn't have I don't know if they would have known where you're going, but the yep. appraisal thing is big because the agents think, Oh god, no, not VA. Oh, no. I'm not that appraisal is gonna come in low, there's gonna be repairs, I'm not gonna be able to deal with it. Am I no, close? This is spot it, on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And how tell a loan officer, what do you give them a baby? We got a little bit of time left. Sure. Give them the seminar. Give them like a great takeaway. How would you start that in front of the agents? What do you? How do you overcome that automatic objection? Telling a seller we're not taking that contract because it's the VA. Well, one of the things I would I would say too is for the loan officer to say, hey, listen, you know, conventional and FHA financing aren't going to allow you to uh, basically uh, rebuttal the price. If this comes in low, you're done, and it's going to come out of your customer's pocket. VA has tide water, which means if it's the appraisal might be coming in low, the appraiser's got to identify, got to uh, notify both the listing and the selling a or both the listing agent and the buyer's agent that this is going to happen, which then allows them to provide additional comps. So what I love about the VA appraisal and the way it's set up is it's almost like if a tree falls in a forest, does it make a sound? 
well, it, no, if no one's around, no, I guess it does. It doesn't. I don't know with the VA appraisal the same way. Like he might've came in low earlier, but these comps are great. So he's going to increase his price and send it into the VA. The VA is like, we didn't hear the tree fall. This is what we got now. This is good. We'll take it. You know what I mean? Where in the conventional world, if the appraisal comes in low, the appraiser's not going to change that because- Not what today. No. And you can't lobby them and you no. can't talk to them. Because what happens? They yeah. get They get dinged for making an error by the lender and now their scorecard goes to the crapper and now they, instead of being on the round robin, they might get booted off. So it's a double-edged sword. They're not going to do it, whether they're right or wrong. How long does it take today? I remember it used to take about three weeks to go to local field office with an mm -hmm. appraisal. Again, you can talk that. Sure. <laughs> With a low, how long does it take today? Uh, you know, the sales price is three hundred. Uh, the VA appraiser is coming in at uh, two eighty two. Um, the agents know that he missed a couple of comps. Hey, man, you missed these two right here. Uh, one I'm just sold. One just went under contract. You know, this thing should be coming in at least two ninety eight all day. Um, how long does that process take um, to uh, for the lender in general to get that? You know, to get it re revalued. So typically, uh, expect, well, right and can now- Can a LAP underwriter do it or does it have to go to a field office? Well, so the so the underwriter can always issue NOV, right? So okay. they, can, they always have final NOV issue. They can um, they can take it up themselves. But but the problem is this. So when uh, an issue goes out, because they can't do it, they can't technically do it. The, when the uh, Tidewater has been initiated and they issue new comps out to the appraiser, the appraiser has, they're on a service level agreement. They have like 72 hours to- agree or disagree okay everybody's on this tight timeline and if they agree okay great it goes you know the va takes it they're good they upload it in web lgy and the lender issues the nov everybody's happy if the appraiser disagrees and says i'm going to keep it the same way you do have the opportunity with the va to have the staff appraiser look at it which is another positive about va's appraisals that you don't get with conventional or fha you still can get the one look after by the VA. And if the VA says, hey, we support these comps and the, you know, and your underwriter issues NOV, everybody's good. So you still got plan A, plan B with VA. You don't have either one of those plans with so, conventional or FHA. So again, there's been massive takeaways sitting here with Brian. I mean, huge, big, massive takeaways, but that is to me so Interesting, uh, and that I, I'm betting that very few loan officers understand and could explain to their agent partners it's actually the opposite of what you think. Yep. So to tell a seller we're not taking that because that's VA and it's going to be brutal and we're going to have to fix stuff and they're going to hammer us and whatever, it's actually the opposite because you actually have, you call it a plan A and plan B, not even just plan A, a plan A and plan B. You know, this wasn't necessarily true 15 years ago, but it's true today. Yeah. Today, there's really no negative I mean, at all. It's, it's, uh, it's the, I mean, it really is the best appraisal in the game right now. And at the end of the day, you know, the VA will always side on the, will always side with the vet, right? That's, that's the rule that they always apply to everything. Always. And I've seen them do some amazing things you know, in, in the effort to help a vet get into a house, you know what I mean? And so, you know, we should be as an industry going out and cheerleading the VA appraisal. Now, don't get me wrong. It had its rough patch, right? With, uh, I've been in that. Yeah, supply yeah. and demand crushed it. And that's really where a lot of the agents have, you know, this negative attitude toward appraisals, which, hey, don't get me wrong. To, it's hard to go into a marketplace and tell them the seller they're going to have to wait three months to sell to a vet because that's how long it's going to take to get a VA appraisal done. Right, right. That's unacceptable. Right. But the actual nuts and bolts of it and the positives that it brings to the transaction are are not what people think. Yeah. Interesting. So it's so interesting. So again, I get asked all the time, Joel, I need to, to talk to agents. I need to educate agents. I, I'll be honest with you, Brian. I haven't been saying uh, do VA. Right. <laughs> I haven't. I, I haven't been saying that. But instead of teaching them really about about VA, I would teach them. I'd take this podcast and I would teach them the first three things. You know, people people loyal, not brand loyal. Volunteer. Is your does your social media say you're open yep. for business for vets? That alone, and then they could eat pizza. And the agents would be like, wow. Yep. That's cool. And the agents listening to this, I hope you I hope you uh, take some of that as takeaways. So so we talked about um, agents uh, um, 
for agents, mm -hmm. how to build out that business. Um, we talked about LOs, you know, the loan officers definitely being educated, and that's a big one. And sure. it's, you know, you really need to learn by doing, but you can get a large education if you're asking the sure. right person. You don't need to be on base. And then the last one we were talking about, which is a big one, is make VA one of your subjects. You know, you don't really think to do that if you're doing a lunch and learn. Make VA your subject because there are a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Um, and then, you know, the other thing Brian said, which I hope won't get buried in here, he just he, he crushed out the Missouri stats because that's where he lived. <laughs> there's no base. There's no active mm -hmm. military anywhere. But yet there's 500 thousand uh active or or retired living veterans that would have a certificate of eligibility well unless they used it would have a certificate of eligibility and could obtain a va loan is that my pretty yeah you're always i would definitely i think every state's probably looking the same way for the most part with the I, exception of states where you know yeah. like like Norfolk, I mean, we're the largest <laughs> yeah. military presence yeah. ever. That's going to be 30%. Yeah. going to be really high. Like yeah. in San Diego, like With in Northern the California, roof. it's harder to find someone who's never served than Through served. Through the roof, um, yeah. But, you know, but I always look at it like with the military and veteran demographic, it, the pie is the pie. And there's not a lot of people eating on that pie. You know what I mean? So why why try to eat with a thousand people on this other pie when you can go to that pie and be like one of ten? So, so Brian, tell me, uh, tell everyone um, how they uh, find you, or we can put it up as well. Um, I'm assuming you would take questions sure. uh, from anyone, uh, loan officers or agents, if they had if they had questions. Yeah. What's the best way to find you? Is it emails? Go a certain place, or yeah, what's so, the best way? Uh, they can. I mean, they can reach out to me on LinkedIn if they want. I Start know there. Of, I know a lot of people like to do that, and uh, you know, let's connect on LinkedIn. Ask Berg me Jans. Berg Jans. It's yeah. Brian with a Y, and last name's Berg Jans. B e r g j a n s. All of this will be up, uh, you know, wherever whether you whether you look at YouTube or iTunes or on my Facebook page, and it will be up all over the place, so you can find uh, you can find Brian. Brian, this is uh, you know for me, this is really cool. Um, I saw the power myself personally of um, veterans and um, helping really veterans very early on. Um, and I actually, I'll just share this is a really interesting story without saying the guy's name. I had a guy come into me and he um, was uh, from Vietnam. Um, so he was Vietnamese and he served for the U.S. military, but not in an official capacity. He was then evacuated with his family over here and was told that he had VA benefits and actually had VA benefits, but didn't have a certificate of eligibility because it was so unique. Yep. And this was in 1990. Again, I was three at the time, people. Uh, this was in 1990. So just 15 years from the end of the, of the Vietnam War. And uh, so he'd been in here 15 years and he was trying to buy a house and it was brutal, brutal. And nobody, because we couldn't get his sure. certificate of eligibility because yep. he was like a ghost. He was almost like a special forces <laughs> guy that wasn't in the military. And what I did on that loan, we got him a loan, really just turned me on to the yep. whole, you know, the whole, man, this is cool. You know, I yep. really helped this guy. This guy served our country, not even officially. Yep. You know, it was like finding a needle in a haystack. It was a ghost. Who knows who he was really working for? But the <laughs> bottom line is, is we got a certificate of eligibility. We got yep. it. I had to go to VA and get it myself. Um, back then, you know, there was no alt doc. There was VODs yeah. and VODs, and we used. To, I used to drive to Walter Reed and sit and let him wait for him to fill it out, seal it in the envelope, and take it back because it would take so long. It was like one person. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you didn't care about. You needed their their LES, but you needed a VOE. You know, if they were active or whatever, it was crazy. But but. Uh, you know, what I'm hearing from you, and I just want everyone to hear as we wrap up, is that very underserved community, oh, correct? Without it's a doubt. Massive. The opportunity is through the roof. But, but without a doubt. And to your point, too, one thing I would also like to add as a little nugget, too, is the COE process is your secret weapon because people- That's certificate of eligibility, people. That's what <laughs> allows them to borrow money using a VA loan. Because I can tell you right now, we created a group two years ago called our basically our search and rescue team. Right, and it's 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 a tight knit group of individuals who do nothing but work with uh, archives and the VA to obtain COEs and missing military documents. Because a lot of people think just because someone says they served, 
that they just go ahead and put them in for a VA loan. And then all of a sudden they find out they don't have a COE and it's, uh oh, what yeah. do we do next? And the customer doesn't have their military documents. And, and then there was a next? fire in Johnstown. Yeah. And everything burned. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I've personally went down to the archive myself probably 200 times yeah. to get military documents for somebody so they could get a COE. I and mean, I will tell you that you do that one time for one person, uh, your ROI on that is uh, $4 billion, oh, meaning they will tell everyone. It's huge. And what I've learned, too, is that understanding what a COE is and how to read one and all the verbiage that's in them and then how to obtain one is both a realtor and a loan officer's kind of tool in their well, back pocket. you know, it's interesting. We got to wrap there, you sure. But it's interesting, you know, uh, having someone say they're doing a VA loan and them not having their certificate of eligibility and an agent having them out in a car without yeah. a good lender is uh, what I call zero commission. It is zero commission because 28 days later, you find out they don't have one. And now you're scrambling around and you're sticking somebody in an FHA loan because we just didn't do our homework here to get the That's person right. their stuff. They could have had 100% well, financing. Before we go, I want to give you something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is a Grunt Style shirt. And I'm going to plug Grunt Style right now because they are a veteran-owned company. And it's our We Got Your Six shirt with Caliber Home Loans. My wife is going to be so happy because I'm one of those guys that wherever I go, if it's a cool <laughs> place, I buy a T-shirt. So I have so many T-shirts that she rotates them, you know, so at least yeah. I'll wear them. <laughs> so thank you yeah, very much. Like no, I, no, I appreciate it. I'm going to wear it. I'll send you a picture of me on it. Awesome, man. Uh, enjoy the book. Thank you so much uh, for, for coming in. Always love having people live. And by the way, there's so much good stuff in here, people. This is a listen to two or three times uh, for real estate agents and for loan officers, anyone serving veterans. Um, so again, if you like the podcast, uh, please uh, go and like it, subscribe, leave comments. Uh, you can leave questions for Brian. Yep. 